My name's James, and I paint minis. This is Spoon 37 Minis. So in the last video on the Death Guard, you saw me dry brushing the chainmail, first in silver, and then later on in brown to make it look weathered. In this video, we're going to take it a step further and show you that you can use wash and dry brushing on all of the other details as well. So to that end, I've actually gone and blocked in all of the base colours on all of the other details, or at least most of them. So like for example, this is Screamer Pink on the tentacles and this loincloth thing. Um, but I've also done you know, all the flesh colours, the yellow spots, the spikes, all of that. So it's all blocked in, ready to go, ready for wash and dry brushing. As ever, I have done two thin coats. I'm just showing you the very first coat of Bookman's Glow on the Plague Champion. Uh, but I did, of course, come back and do a second coat because straight over black, it doesn't give particularly amazing coverage. So just to iterate the point that you do do two thin coats, even if it is for details that are gonna be washed and dry brushed later on. I've also used the base texture, as you can see here, applied with a small spatula, uh, just as we did on the ultramarine and the yellow marine that followed. Um, the difference here is that I'm going to show you that you can also use wash and dry brushing on this texture. So starting with washes. So the included washes with the uh, Citadel Essential set from 8th edition was simply Agrax Earthshade. So that's what we're going to start with on some of the details, not all of them. So we're going to use Agrax Earthshade and we're going to use the Games Workshop M Shade brush for applying it. As ever, shake your paints. This one doesn't need a huge amount of shaking because it's a wash. And as you'll see, the paint inside is transparent and tends to run away from where it's placed, even in the paint pot. Now, in the case of the base here, because it's heavily, heavily textured, what you'll find is you need to load up the brush with lots and lots of Agrax Earthshade. I'm actually using it neat from the pot, which I normally water things down, but for this purpose, I don't. Um, and I just apply a lot of paint, a lot of wash if you will, um, to this texture until it all looks like the recesses are darker. What you will find is this basically makes the uh, sunken areas of the texture dark and then if you go over this later by dry brushing the base colour or a highlight colour or both, you'll actually find that has all of the raised surfaces lighter, so you get a tremendous amount of contrast from doing this. We can also use the Acrax Earthshade just as we were on the base, but on several other details. Now the trick here is to use the tip of the brush and actually go over this skull on the shoulder, avoiding the armor, which I've already used wash on, right? So I'm going up to the edges and trying to get it in the eye sockets and everything. Um, but then moving on to other details, such as the metallic colors, we're trying to avoid the armor and avoid any areas painted black because it won't actually show up. But otherwise, it's pretty much the same as applying it to the base. Now, having started some of the other metallic colors, such as the silver and the grenade, we might as well continue and do the shoulder trim and all the trim all over the plague marine. 
because that too can be shaded. Now, given the inclusion of some metallic colours in the box, uh, I'm not probably going to be able to dry brush these or highlight them with a lighter metallic colour, but if you have the colours available, you could. So here I'm just going to shade them using this. You can take it as red that I do this to every part of the trim, whereas what I'm actually gonna show you is just the first shoulder pad, and then having done most of the trim, just finishing off the last few bits. So the trick with what I'm doing here with the trim is to push the brush over pretty much the exact center of the trim so that the bristles go either side so that it presses up against the armor but doesn't go too far into the armor so that you get wash between the trim and the armor making it appear to have a greater amount of contrast which you'll find it does pretty much immediately with this technique. You don't want to go too far over into the armor though you can see I have just gone over it a little bit on the leg. It doesn't show up too badly. Now some of the other details also need wash. You'll find that I'm deliberately omitting the uh, magenta coloured details at the moment because I actually want that to be the darkest colour on them. But for things like the yellow spots, I do actually use the brown wash and I'm also doing something here which is called pin washing. The idea is to just get a little bit of wash around each rivet and any small detail can be pin washed. Now you could just dab the brush into it or poke the brush into it. Um, but here I'm actually trying to use the tip of the brush to go all the way around each rivet. It's a little bit difficult. You'll see in some places I get a little bit too much on, but that's fairly easy to fix as I'll show you in just a moment. So having got a bit too much on some of those rivets, I'm actually washing the brush, wiping it onto tissue and then using it to wick away any excess wash. Anywhere where I think I've used a little bit too much and then of course I can go back to the wash, get a small amount on the brush and try and do it again a little bit better. Which is essentially the same thing but with just slightly less wash. Now, because this is one of those simple but quite time-consuming tasks, I'm not obviously going to show you every single rivet that I've done. So I've shown you a few of the starting ones, and now I'm going to show you finishing off with the last few on the legs. Do be sure to catch the fact that there are some on the sides of the legs, the backs of the legs, the feet, and so on. So there are quite a lot to do, even on this relatively simple model. Moving on to one of these separate backpacks, but again, it's the same principle. Obviously it has a skull, it has metallic silver, it has the metallic bronze color, and of course it actually has a small number of rivets on it. So you use exactly the same technique, um, trying to avoid the armor color and the green goo that's hanging down, but otherwise you can apply it fairly generously on all of the other pieces. The only thing I would point out is you do really want to go up to the edges of the armor color. And of course, if you do get it over the armor color, it's not the end of the world, uh, but you really want to go up to the edge and no more if you can. Now these lines and things on 
the backpack so I'm using the same technique as I did with the trim trying to get the brush to straddle it so that it paints down both sides so you get contrast between the tube or pipe and the armour and if you find that you have contrast if you like on one side and not the other fine just paint the other side with a little bit more wash afterwards I'm hoping that you can see that by having this run off into the recesses it takes very little effort but you actually get a lot of contrast out of it compared to just having the base colours alone. As pointed out, this backpack does also have a small number of rivets on, so just as with the marine itself, we have to pin wash those as well. finishes off the backpack with Agrax Earthshade, moving on to the separate gun arm. Now there are probably more bits to this than you expect will need wash, so obviously there's the trim and the rivets, but also all of the metallic colours on the gun can be done in this fashion because being Death Guard, putting a brown wash over the metallics will make them look a little bit dirty, which is entirely appropriate. Um, but then there's also the sort of wooden part of the stock and the bandages wrapped around as well as the little bronze scarab hanging down all of which need wash so although this is a tiny little area and you're going to omit the crab claw and the black color it still needs a surprising number of areas to be washed so i'm going over this sort of wooden area as well as the bandages. The bandages were painted in Rakarth flesh, but the wooden area was painted in a mixture of Mornfang brown and Ceramite white to give it a light wooden colour. As I say, I mean, you could use something like a black wash, but if you use a brown wash on silver, it tends to look worn, aged, or dirty, depending on how you interpret the image. Uh, obviously, we expect the recesses on metallic colors like this to be black. If they're brown, it suggests some kind of dirt or rot. And of course, that, as these are plague marines dedicated to Nurgle, you know, a bit of rot is entirely appropriate. Now you 
you see me going over the magazine several times, it's simply because I got a bit too much wash in there to begin with and I have to use the brush when it has a lot less wash in it in order to pull the wash back out so that you can actually see the bullets rather than just sort of completely brown air cracks of the shade. Now, at this point, I would normally use a purple wash over the flesh-coloured areas in order to make them look a bit sickly or inflamed. The problem with that is, of course, I'm using the Citadel Essentials Kit, there's no purple wash. So, instead of going out of my way and buying one, I'm going to mix up, strictly speaking, it's not really a wash, it's more of a glaze, but it's going to be Mephiston Red mixed with McCrag Blue, and then heavily watered down, as you'll see. As ever in my videos, I'm adding a little uh, tube to the back of these paint pots, which as you can see, the Mephiston Red is very prone to snapping shut, and I don't really want that to happen generally, but particularly when I'm shooting video. Now, this isn't rocket science, but I'm going to mix a fairly generous amount of this together, considering the small amount of areas we're actually doing. And it'll be in a roughly two to one ratio. So essentially twice as much red as the blue, because I found the blue can be a little bit overpowering in this kind of mix. And I want it to be a somewhat reddish purple. Right now that's the colour mixed as you can see on the palette and I'm getting some water. Now normally I would just dip in the brush maybe once and that would be enough water for painting on. However, I need this to be really really runny so I'm going to add water I think four or five times in order to make it really really thin and runny and so that it should run at least into the recesses it might not go only into the recesses but that's fine i can always highlight with the base color afterwards so as you see we start to apply it generously as if it were a wash and you'll find very quickly it's run into all of those recesses and you can see the detail starting to pop up and it does look suitably disgusting I'm going to paint this particular mix on all of the areas that are currently co coloured in with Bugman's Glow, the base flesh colour. And the idea is that this will make all of the recesses this kind of uh, reddish purple colour, making them look inflamed. And then I'm going to highlight it with the base colour and then Rakarth flesh to make the flesh on top look kind of grey and ill, uh, which seems again entirely appropriate for Plague Marines. Same again, but obviously this is a face, so the effect is a little bit more dramatic. You go from this kind of plain colour to suddenly having a load of contrast just by applying a little bit of this custom wash. So I think you can see it was worth doing. Uh, one thing I would make note of, I am trying to go over all of the flesh areas, but I'm not going to uh, cross it into the border where the spikes are coming out of the head. You could do the base of those, but I th personally think it would look slightly wrong. And 
it's easy enough to miss, but on the original uh, Blade Marine that we were working on, there are two little fleshy tubes right behind the backpack. Oh, I've just got some on the armor color, so I'm adding water to it and then wicking it away with the same brush. So that's what to do in case you get the wrong color in the wrong area. Just tell you shit with water basically and then dry the brush and then use, use the brush itself to wick away any excess water and paint and then you can go back to applying this wash or paint or whatever you do. Now because these are Chaos Space Marines and they are considerably warped and mutated, even the backpacks have fleshy tubes on them. So these two need the same custom wash applied just on the tubes and hopefully again that will run into the, the recesses and all of the edges and give us that desired sort of inflamed flesh looking effect. same also goes for the champion's backpack as well only this has four fleshy tubes on it so taking care to not get it on any of the other areas nearby but we still need to get this custom wash all over these tubes including the edges and the top which i will show you in a moment by tipping up the whole backpack pretty much finishes all of the wash that I'm going to do. So now we move on to dry brushing. Just as before, we're going to start with the base. Only this time we're using a dry brush. And because there's no uh, sand color included with this paint set, we're going to have to mix together Avalanche Sunset and Mournfang Brown to create an approximation of that base colour. We're trying to match up with Armageddon Dust. Try not to drop your paints at home, kids. Because this is a pre-mixed colour, I am going to show you the exact ratio that I use. Now the idea is to come back at this with a colour that is fairly close to the original base colour, but perhaps ever so slightly lighter. So I'm actually going to mix them in a 2 to 1 ratio, or in this case actually a 4 to 2 ratio. As you can see, so 4 blobs of yellow to 2 blobs of brown. And then I'm going to use a cocktail stick and a steady hand. And I'm just going to mix them together. Note that I've used a cocktail stick which is totally separate to the other two so if I need more paint I can pick the appropriate coloured cocktail stick and go back and get more yellow or more brown as I see fit but I think this mix will work out without doing so. Like the previous mix, we use no water whatsoever in this, and we load up the brush and then wipe it off on a tissue as before when we were doing the armor colors. But now we're aiming for the base. Now, as you can see, this brush is quite big compared to the model, and so it's a Games Workshop M dry brush, in case you were wondering. Um, so we're trying to hit as much of the base as we can. If we get a tiny bit on the armor, it doesn't matter too much because it'll look like a bit of weathering, like sand has got onto the armor. Uh, but we're trying to avoid that wherever possible. We're not trying to go for like a heavy weathering effect on the armor or anything like that. And so just to drive home the point, I am going to show you on all three ba bases because it doesn't take very long and it does create a lot more contrast than it had before, even with just the wash. So 
same again on the champion's base uh, trying to get in into the middle a bit more than on the other two because he has quite an open pose and there is room for the brush but it's the same principle just trying to hit the texture catch all of the raised edges with a color that actually is a little bit more yellow than the base color but it'll do swiftly on we're going to be dry brushing the spikes next now obviously although it's the same brush that has been washed and this was actually done on a different day I'm going to dry brush first first with raw Rakarth flesh and then I'm going to mix ceramite white with Rakarth flesh for a further highlight so we're actually going to dry brush these twice So starting off with Rakarth Flesh, I'm going to get some on the palette and then wipe it on the palette and then we're going to wipe the brush on the tissue to get rid of most of it, just as before. And then we're going to be dry brushing the spikes sticking out of the right shoulder guard on the death guard. Now, well, this is a really huge brush because these are so far from the body of the marine you can actually get away provided you do so sweeping away from the helmet and away from the armor and as you see although this is the base color because the spikes had agrax earthshade on them they're actually darker than this color so this looks like a highlight right away same again on the champion these spikes are particularly huge and well suited to this large brush but you do have to be careful to be moving the brush away from the other armor pieces um, the head obviously the spikes coming out of the head are much the same but then you've got to try and miss the shoulder guard right beside them now for the third plague marine I'm actually using the original starter brush that came with the paint set because of course these spikes are so much smaller and that huge brush would have been really overkill and it would have been very hard to miss you know the gun and the armor and the base and so on so this gives us a little bit more control and i could have done the other steps with this it just would have taken a lot longer Now, as I said before, I'm going to use Rakarth Flesh mixed with Ceramite White for a further highlight. Um, so here I'm going to mix them together on the palette for you. I'm having to dip into the pot because it's not actually holding very much paint up near the lid. But then we're going to get some Ceramite White and mix that in. Now, whenever you're using black or white to mix in, do be careful with the amount that you're using because it can be quite overpowering. It's not only respectively lightening or darkening, but also it will slightly desaturate the color as well. For these particular models, they have a desaturated color palette, so I'm not too worried. But if you were doing something really vibrant and colorful, you might want to think again. You might want to look into alternative ways of lightening the paint, different colors to mix in. So hoping you can see side by side the two colours on the palette are quite different to one another. This one is much lighter even though it's not actually white. And so same again but we're now using the starter brush so as to strike a smaller area and give us a bit more control. And then we can use this to just highlight the tips of these spikes and then they'll have effectively four colours on them.
same again with the next Plague Marine. And obviously I'll do the Plague Champion as well in the same manner. Uh, but the video is now getting a bit long, so I'm thinking of ending it with the spikes. And then in the next video, I'll show you highlighting the tentacles, which of course haven't been washed at all, so it will all be done with highlighting, and then also highlighting the flesh parts. these spikes on the champion are huge you're only really still doing the tip so we're sticking with a small brush and just trying to catch the very raised areas or the tips inside and outside of course uh, try not to go over too much of the area that we did with just plain Rakarth flesh and just catch the areas that would be naturally a little lighter you always assume the light is coming roughly from above and usually slightly in front of the miniature so that's kind of where we're aiming for the highlights to be Right, if you've watched this far, firstly thank you for watching, I very much appreciate it. If you did like the video, please hit like, hit subscribe, hit the little bell shaped icon to let you know when the next video will be coming out, I hope it will be soon.